Keep your eyes peeled. We definitely have an imposter here. You see, real strategy requires cunning. I will cut you down right where you stand. It's thanks to everyone who's helped us that we got this far. I won't let their efforts go to waste. I believe we can get back there. If we fight the suppression. If we are fearless against the evils of the world. We can be everything we were. You sure know how to make an entrance. Here comes the you can tell us what the hell is going on here. Get this man a diaper. Huh? Hi, everybody, and welcome to the final video of the year for our ongoing Game of the Year conversations. I am going to be your moderator in the midst of this chaos for the next few hours, Logan Moore, as uh, we here at Dual Shockers come to a consensus on our site's game of the year for 2020 uh if you've not been following along we've been doing this over the course of the year uh we've got four previous episodes you can go watch if you want to hear us talk about largely everything that launched in this calendar year but we have basically got our nominations down for the final prize down to about 20 games at this point uh, and tonight we are going to go over arguments and debates on what should be the winner uh here in this current year uh so Let's just get right into things. Uh, tonight, our crew joining us, we have got probably our most extensive panel so far. Uh, going left to right on my screen, we've got Cameron Hawkins. Cameron, hi. Hey. We've got 
Camilo Olmedo. Yeah, you got it. There we go. Hey, uh, we have got Charlie Wakels here with the green screen, which we should put something on that, <laughs> I, I think. <laughs> uh, we've got Chris Cornelis here from Australia, bright and early in the morning. We've got Mario Rivera running the board per usual. Hi. Hi, how's it going? We've got Michael Ruiz with the Coheed and Cambria shirt on. It looks pretty rad. And he's, got Sun's the... out. he's got the guns yeah, showing. Yeah, I was going to say, show the guns, too. <laughs> Uh, by comparison, we've got Otto bundled up in a nice little sweater with a dad hat on. <laughs> Hi, Otto. Hello. Is that Cartoon Network going? hat? No, it's Scottoon oh. Network. Oh, oh, that's so great. That's so that guy great. follows me on great. Twitter. He doesn't say anything to me. All right, so I'll continue. <laughs> uh, we've got, got Ricky Fleck here who is growing the beard still, I think. Or did you shave it finally? I have not shaved it, but it's there going to go. Oh, Never shave it. No. Finish out the year strong with it. Don't shave till the new year. Uh, Ryan Mike's list. Ryan Meitzler is here. I think he's already drinking a beer there. So I'm, I'm <laughs> almost one beer in, so we'll see how many it takes to get through this. There Same tease. And last but not least, uh, Scott White is also with us. And Scott, your shelves actually look better this time than they have the past couple times. <laughs> I was going to mention I had that. I flipped them upside down, so they're rebending back down to a medium before <laughs> picking back down. So, there you go, that's dude. A bit. Jeez. That's, that's, that's a bit. That's not true, I look, right? I mean, the, the, no, the arc is. of Scott's shelves over the course of this game of the year has been probably the most interesting thread to follow if you've watched all of these videos. <laughs> Better story yeah, than here. Twilight is all I gotta, I'm going to say. Gotta <laughs> I gotta make you full screen for a second just to show that off. A good Continue timely reference. Um, it's insane. okay. So let's get into how we're gonna be doing this tonight. So as I said, we have got about twenty games that it's we are going impressive. to be going over tonight. I am just going to read off all of the contenders right off the bat here, just so you know everything we we are going to be discussing tonight. So to just rant and get this over with, uh, we have got the games in contention for our game of the year for two thousand twenty is Trails of Cold Steel Four. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Yakuza Like a Dragon, Final Fantasy VII Remake, The Last of Us Part II, Ghost of Tsushima, Fall Guys, Spiritfarer, Wasteland 3, Hades, Persona 5 Royal, Ori in the Will of the Wisps, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Doom Eternal, Half-Life Alex, Among Us, Star Renegades, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, Crusader Kings 3, Desperados 3, and Tetris Effect Connected. Those are our nominees that we're coming into this conversation looking at. If you uh, have a game in mind that did not make that cut, reminder, you have four previous episodes you can go listen to, and you can be filled in on why those potentially did not make the cut in their corresponding quarters in which they released. Uh, other than that, so our panel here is pretty extensive. This is not the full Dual Shockers crew, though. We have... 12 to 13, what we are calling mail-in ballots for the evening <laughs> of people sitting in their nomination for the number one game that they think should be coming away as the winner at the end of this conversation. And many of them have also wrote multiple paragraphs or a single paragraph or a couple of sentences talking about why they think that game should uh, win. So I have not told you guys how we are going to do this, but uh, I know all of the mail-in ballots and so does Ryan. Uh, and over the course of the night, we are going to talk about uh, when we when it gets relevant or whatever, we will be pointing to these mail-in ballots. And when you hear this sound, hold on. No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> when you hear that sound, nice, nice, nice. nice. That means there's a mail-in ballot that has come through, <laughs> and we will be pointing to one of the mail-in ballots to talk about why there's somebody on stack thinks that that game is relevant enough to be game of the year. That is a good one. Um, Interesting. So yeah, I will also throw in a solid snake quote. There you go. <laughs> you can do that. Your solid snake over on Twitter. Oh, so. Colonel um, Gray Fox. That's how we've uh, got this planned out. Other than that, uh, prepare for chaos because it's surely going to be that as soon as we get into this. <laughs> but uh, we're going to start kind of working ourselves backwards because we've got 20 games or 21, I think, in specifically uh, in contention right now. So we need to trim that list down. So we're going to start by trying to get rid of the ones that we think are probably not going to stick around very long. And to that effect, uh, let's talk about desperados 3 because i think there's only one person here who has played the game and i don't even think he is somebody who is going to back the game for game of the year so ricky i think you were the one who nominated this or you and maybe somebody else on staff there you go charlie's got his 
<laughs> mid <Midgard> background <laughs> going down. There we go. Okay. Um, Desperados 3. If you want to yeah. throw a case out there for it, we can. I don't know what you think, if it needs to stick on this list or if we can wipe it right away. You can wipe it. I mean, it's a really good game. More people should play it, but it is like number eight on my list, so you can wipe it off. Now, Ricky, I actually have been meaning to ask you about this, though, uh -huh. because there is a sect of gamers that I um, am firmly in the middle of uh, that is looking for a cowboy-themed game to fill their hearts because Red Dead Online has certainly gone down the toilet with this last update. Is Desperado 3 that game? Well, I got to let you know first... I think Red Dead Redemption 2 is a terrible game, so that let that, let that well, color your just, opinion. It's just wrong. So. Uh, okay, all right. That's that's a two years ago. We're arguing about now. 2020 no, tonight, just, everybody. I'm, <laughs> I'm giving him. Start. I'm giving him a, like a you know something to yeah, color his opinion on what I'm about to say. But yeah, it's if you like strategy games, I think it's definitely worth a look because hmm. it does it does a lot of different stuff than like your uh, Gears Tactics or even XCOM. It's very different from those games. It's more stealth focused. Uh, so it's something different. I liked it a lot. On the Steam wish list, wish list it goes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Ricky. I mean, speaking for you, like your review was really well written and well detailed earlier this year. Like why you like that game and why it kind of surprised you because you basically mm -hmm. said you did not really expect that game to do much for you, and then you ended up kind of adoring it afterwards. So yeah, um, check out Ricky's review. It's definitely one of the better strategy games of the year that has come out. Um, and on that point, let's just talk about the other strategy game here in the room, which is uh, Crusader Kings 3. I don't know if anybody on this panel has played it. Um, some multiple members of the team nominated it for Game of the Year. I don't know if any of them are here to stick up for it. Uh, spoiler alert, we also have no mail-in ballots for this game. <laughs> uh, so to that degree, I don't know if anybody has anything they want to say about this, if anybody here has played it or not. Okay, so we're going to wipe Crusader Th Kings 3. As far as like grand strategy games go, I know people have been like all over this game this year. So if that's yeah, like yeah. your jam, then that's probably one of your most played games of the year and is probably your favorite game of the year. I didn't have the time or I'd, or I'd lose myself to it. So that's why I haven't. Yeah. yeah. Same. Like Same. I said, like multiple, multiple people on the staff uh, in our voting that we did before this, before coming into this, clearly voted for it. But again, we didn't have anybody putting it number one on their list or anything like that, even from the mail in ballots that we'll have. So, uh, so the other third, <laughs> two, two eliminated very quickly, much faster than I thought this would go. But we've also not gotten into anything that is contentious yet. Uh, let's look at Tetris Effect Connected as well. Um, this is another one that I think is kind of a surprise edition. Charlie, I know you played this one. I don't know if you want to say anything about this one specifically. Yeah, so I played it. I was kind of, I guess, surprised to see it on the list because I don't actually remember nominating it. Um, it's an incredible game. Uh, it's obviously on top of, you know, Tetris Effect, which is already really cool, really awesome. It does a lot of really interesting things for multiplayer, which uh, I've never seen before in a Tetris game, and I've played a ton of Tetris. So I think from that standpoint, it's really awesome at what it does. But, like, I don't know if I necessarily would put it above some of the other games that are on this list. Uh, I'm Again, like I said, I don't actually think I nominated it, so I was very surprised to see it on there. I gave it a 9.5. Uh, it's really an excellent game. I definitely recommend everyone checks it out, but I don't necessarily know if I'd say it's Game of the Year caliber. I played a little bit of this. Uh -oh. oh, no. <laughs> um, there's the first mail-in. So this is how I think this ended up on the list. Uh, Tetris Effect Connected is the number one game of the year for Lou Cantaldi. Uh, <laughs> Lou writes in and says, uh, a bit of a personal surprise, but my favorite game in 2020 ended up being Tetris Effect Connected, an embodiment of everything I needed from a self-care perspective. Whether we are talking about the new multiplayer options that kept me together with my friends or the ethereal and meditative gameplay. Uh, how do you say that word? Is it ethereal? Ethereal. 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 Yeah. ethereal. One of those things where you read it on the page. Anyway. Uh, there are a few games that have touched me through, uh, through 2020, like Tetris Effect Connected. To this day, the game's main banger, Connected, Yours Forever, is a powerful anthem through quarantining, reminding me daily that we're all connected in this. Don't miss this reimagining of the age-old puzzle game, whether you can play the latest version of the game or not. That well, comes from Lou. I was going to basically echo a lot of what Lou was going to bring up, where this game 
came out. I know that it came out last year, but then it, it's now more widely available with the Game Pass option mm-hmm. on both PC and Xbox. And that's when I got a chance to really deep into it. And I, and I avoided the soundtrack too, specifically because I knew that it was so heavily tied to this. And then getting to experience it for the first time, and I'm a huge Tetris player from all the way back to NES, Game Boy, and from obviously the NES system itself. Um, so to play a new version of Tetris in a different way, it, it, it just, I, I do think this game is also very special. Now, compared to everything that came out this year, I wouldn't say so, but I'm happy that it made somewhat of a nomination. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like the original Tetris effect came out, what, two years ago at this point? And that mm-hmm. game is exceptional. Um, yes. And this is just an expansion on that in many ways. And obviously, like, now it's on Xbox and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's that same game, and that same game was awesome, and that same game won Game of the Year honors a couple years ago as well from some publications I know. Like, it was probably maybe the best Tetris video game ever made, um, yeah. other than maybe the original for obvious reasons. Um, but, yeah, like, it is uh, – if you, if you like Tetris, then it's really hard to beat what that game does in, in a lot of ways. But, yeah, I don't think – I think just purely looking at like the new content, there's not enough there. I, I think Lou makes a good argument though for the uh, like that game's whole theme really is about staying connected and being connected, and there's probably not a more relevant <laughs> thematic in any video game that you could have in 2020 uh, than that. But uh, oh, the fact that they well, gave Tetris boss battles is kind of cool too, from what I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I think, oh, go I think also just from a standpoint of. You know, we we talk about new content for Tetris Effect Connected and having reviewed two and played three Tetris games this year, um, I think Tetris Effect Connected does the most to not only push the genre forward, but also just push Tetris as a whole forward. And I think, you know, because Tetris is such a... Um, it's one of those few games where you can say it's so deeply tied to the DNA of video games as a medium that I think even just acknowledging it and it pushing it forward to a point where it's an emotional, spiritual connection that it's like, okay, there's something here beyond just blocks falling into a well. Yeah. I mean, this one, go ahead. No, go, go for it. Can you play this one on VR or is that, uh, you can, yeah, not connected. connected. Yeah. Not connected. I think it might come. The original. Yeah. 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 I played the original a lot on VR. So I was wondering if this was also there. I'm not sure yet. Is it actually. no? It's VR on PC though. Is it? I believe it is because Fra- I know it, I know it's on I know it's on PC and it's on uh, oh, then probably Xbox yeah. right now. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I'm not if, sure if you have an Oculus or if you have a Vive. I think you should be able to play this. Well, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you still sitting on that headset? Hey. Is that what I'm hearing here? <laughs> After this, <laughs> I wish our companies are on Christmas that. break. <laughs> um. um I was just so yeah I, I i think this game is extremely relevant in 2020 uh i don't see anybody vouching that for this once it comes down to the nitty-gritty here seeing everything else that's on this list no. so i think we can cut it uh sorry to lou but i i think we can cut it in in just, oh. in yeah, uh but play it and when you, if you can yeah. play it it's on game pass play it i'm yes. glad you're cutting this because lou's give gave Murder by numbers, a seven. So he, he deserves it. <laughs> Disgusting. Um, the, uh, I'm, before, I'm, we, I'm, before, we, before we continue, I'm, actually, I'm, can we actually mention the fact that uh, Nicholas Blaine is here as a ghost? Uh, we forgot to, to mention that he was here as Patrick Swayze. So, yes. Oh. yes Welcome Patrick. Patrick Swayze and Nick Blaine. That's right. Both to the, the program. Ghost, the ghost uh, of Nick from, Blaine. Nick Swayze. Anytime you hear the mail in ballots come in, just imagine that it's Patrick Swayze re- reading. <laughs> there he's interjecting. Thing. Uh, you would the be a last good Master Miller. Oh, I could see Patrick oh, Swayze as go. Master Miller. There you go. I could too if he was still among the living. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Master Miller is dead too. I'm just that's, saying. That's true. That's true. Um, all right. Last game I, I wanted to point to before we got really into the chaos that is going to ensue. We could probably look to Among Us. I think with this, this is one that uh, we have all played at one point or another this year. I. I mean, even personally speaking, like this is one of my favorite games of the year. This game is so fun. Uh, I've th- th- this game has been 
uh, yeah, like going back to the whole like multiplayer experience and finding games to connect with one another. I don't think any, there has been a better game for this year potentially than this one. Um, it has brought people together on a level that I don't think any other game has in a long time. Maybe ever. Actually, I saw something this t- this morning about how like 500 million people played this game over the past month, which is like more than any game ever in a single month or something crazy like that. Yep. Um, so this game's success is like mind boggling at this point and a lot of people are gravitating towards it so i don't think there's anything we can really yeah on that point on that basis it deserves to be on here in my in my own opinion but is a game of the year i don't know a great underdog story i think yeah Absolutely. so much so that it really came out two years ago good. and no one knew a thing about it if, so um, for, for me like i'm not gonna consider it because it's not a 2020 game that's just my philosophy i guess but uh, if it was a 2020 game, this would be like one of my top games, like no doubt. Um, but yeah, it's not a 2020 game, so I think we should cut it. It's a, a great example of what can what like a game with a community can do because entire careers have been built around Among Us. Twitch streamers and YouTubers have like rocketed to insane heights god aoc is playing among Mm. us a politician is playing a video game publicly and using that as a platform it speaks to the power of the game um i think it does a lot to advance um the medium in a social aspect yeah yeah in that regard i think it's an important game if not game of the year you know yeah, it's yeah, definitely I think it's, it's important. De- yeah, yeah, I think definitely like in the way that we saw it with games like Fortnite and PUBG and all that, like you know those sorts of games that sort of had us re, you know, uh, see how you know we can have games in sort of this like more social aspect. Like Among Us, I think is definitely the game that people are going to be looking to from this year and saying how can we be sort of the next Among Us and how can we create that sort of social experience. So even though like Among Us is is not my personal top choice for game of the year, I think it's definitely like one of the most important ones I think from this year for sure. I mean, to Cam's point about it not releasing this year, I, I think that's relevant to one in one aspect. And another, I do think it is kind of... I, I, this is very much a specific, like, one exception to the rule because it's hard to be like, well, it came out two years ago. It's like, well, yeah, but, like, what, 50 people knew it came out two years ago? And it, it's like no one in... It, it's, not like a, it's not like a Fortnite situation where it's like, Fortnite's been out for, what, three or four years at this point, and technically it just entered 1.0 this year. It's like... It's nothing stupid like that to me. Uh, but like very similar to Tetris Effect Connected. I, I think with this one, we all here love this game and we all uh, have enjoyed our time with it this year. But we've all got sharp knives behind our backs that we're ready to stab into one another. And I know that we're not. I, I don't know if you realize, but this, this whole is not thing is of, among us. I fight her. This is not ready. This is not going to be a game that I know that everybody it, like. If we if we get this down to the nitty gritty with what seems like it's going to how this list is going to develop, this is not one that. Get Mario, please get that off the screen. Um, <laughs> this is not going to be one of the ones that anybody I feel like here is vouching for, and we don't have any mail in ballots for we this. Should, we should, I would say we should have used the emergency meeting noise for uh, the mail in ballots. <laughs> That's actually a better yeah. idea. Yeah, oh, that would have been really good. That's a better idea. I'm going to switch to that. Very on the fly yeah. game awards we got going on here. There, yeah, there, there we go. go. There <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, so Among Us will now shape this game of the year conversation <laughs> for the rest of the time in one way or another, but it's not going to be our own game of the year. It's that iconic, though. It is. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to leave it to you guys to decide what you want to attack next, because from this point on, (laughs) there's going to be the passion is going to be had. I'm 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 uh, going to bring up immediately. I feel like all guys is kind of among us adjacent. I will. Let's do fall guys. Yeah, I was sure. Yeah. Fall guys is one that should be cut. And you think fall guys should be cut? Absolutely. Okay. So you're probably the biggest fall guys proponent here. Absolutely. Okay. But I don't think it's gonna make it. Why do you think it should be cut? Why do I think it should be cut? I just it's not gonna hang. Like there's no way. Yeah. Like this. 
if everything we, doing, we said about Among Us is true for this as well. If if we were doing a ranked top ten list, I think Fall Guys is like an excellent number ten, but I don't think it's going to hang anywhere close to number one for anybody. So, mm-hmm. I mean, even on my own list, it is what seven, six, six or seven. So okay. how, I don't see how if I'm the one that's hottest on it, how it's going to hang for anybody else. Mm-hmm. In the anyway, adjacent, yeah. it had a good I mean, month. <clears throat> I really, in, I really enjoyed Fall Guys as well. Uh, I've, you know, played it for every season it's been out. You know, the first one I was totally into it. Second one I played it for a while. Third one, this one that just came out, I, I checked it out. Um, it's just gotten kind of stale for me. Um, but you know, when, when, when that game had just come out and was in full swing, boy oh boy, was it fun. It's just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Ricky said, it, it it just hasn't held out like other games have. Uh, it's not as as fresh in my mind like other games. Uh, it doesn't have the staying power, simply put. I feel like that's the way of the battle royale genre to some degree. I feel like that's like every single battle royale game. It's like, oh, I poured countless hours into Apex for the first two months it came out, or PUBG for the first three or four months PUBG. it was out, and then I have not played any of those since then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say, like, two Fall Guys benefit though. Um, I feel like battle royales are like this tainted, gross thing now that everybody, like you mentioned, everybody's like, "Oh, gross! I hate battle royales." Uh, and it's like, Media Tonic comes in there like, "Hey, here's a cool spin on this idea." Like, and I think oh, there's yeah. been a lot of these over the past couple of years. Like Tetris 99 is another really good example of this, mm-hmm. um, where it's like, "Oh, hey, battle royale!" and everybody like starts to vomit in their mouths, and then it's like, "Oh, wait, this is actually fun." And so I, I, I think there's a I think there's a lot more life in that genre, I guess is what I'm saying. Mm. There's uh, a lot you can do with it. it. Yeah. 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 It, found, it found a new way to sort of make Battle Royale really fun, but without having to make it, you know, a Fortnite or a PUBG clone. Yeah, basically. without everybody running into the middle of a circle or something like that. Yeah. So so we're deleting Fall Guys. There is no mail-in ballots for Fall Guys either. Just throwing that out there. All right, again. Eliminated. I, I think we could get rid of and this will hurt me, but I think we could get rid of Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and this no, is all no. no. this is, you can say. And I'm I'm just this is actually my number four on my personal list. Or five. Four or five. It's in the top five. <laughs> uh, no. I just think there are games here that people are like hella passionate about. Like I don't really want to mention them because then we're going to start conversations about those. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he's right. He's right. We're like I stepping think, on eggshells so much. I think right there now. are. I think there are like five <laughs> games here. The two that I think, the big ones, the two big ones, I think we could get rid of that would people would think would probably make it. I think Ori and Ghost of Tsushima are the two that we could get rid of. I would be of. way more down for the latter, but so oh. <laughs> Tsushima over Ori. So I, I like Ori. I think is. If it didn't have the bugs that I had when I played it, I would have given that game such a better score. I did review it. Uh, I gave it an 8.5. You gave it an 8.5, yeah. And that that was with bugs, and it legitimately crashed on me like multiple times. You couldn't like pause (laughs) the screen in that early state without the game like freezing up. It was like 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 when I played Cyberpunk. (laughs) And even then, I still gave it like a really good score. I I really love that game. It's other than one other game that I'm not going to say here because then it's going to, again, it's going to spark something. Uh, I think that game is my personal favorite on this list. Um, but I don't think it's going to hang with some of the other stuff because I think other people are going to have more passionate arguments about them so at the end I of will, the day. So I will say that, like, everyone on staff knows what I'm going to be fighting for. But I will say that, like, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, despite, like, some of the problems I have with that game, is one of the few games on this list where if it won, I would be content. I'd be like, yeah. I'm cool with this. And, and I'm totally... And, like, I, I, think, I think it, and, like... Sorry. Yeah. No, yeah, I I, it, I'm, I'm, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm say, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, you go. I, I think it's just like, uh, I just think it's a brilliant platformer. I think it tells like yes. an amazing story. I think, like, I'm not a huge Metroidvania person either. And like, that game just spoke to me in, in its gameplay and also just with its story too. Like, I, it's an incredible game. It has awesome, like, an art, the art dire- direction for it is incredible. Like, mm-hmm. and there's the so many great things about it. It's just, when I see some of the other games here, there are like 
four or five other games I think people are going to fight for way harder than that than Ori is the thing. I and think that goes to, and that's the same argument for Ghost of Tsushima, which like I also reviewed that game. And I think I also gave it an eight or an eight point five. I think you gave it an eight. I think it was yeah. an eight, yeah. Yeah. And again, I think that game is pretty great in some of its aspects. There are per- parts of it I don't really like. Um, but I think again, there are other games on this list that like people are way more passionate about, and I, think, I don't think it'll hang at the end of the day. I think that there are plenty of. You might be right, uh, Michael, but I I think that there are plenty of games on this list that are like way lower than what you're talking about with Ori I, that we could yeah. get, that we could get rid of first. Like, I, yeah, I, I, I honestly think that. Ori yeah. has. I, I know that Ori's not like one of the top contenders, but I do think Ori has a run for its money. Yeah. So, so I let's talk should... about Ghost of Tsushima then. Yes, let's I, point, I, I, Can I point my cannon towards that game, please? Yeah, can yeah, we so, get I, off this so, list? So I, realistically, I was just gonna say I think I like this game more than anyone else on the staff. Kind of similar to Ricky with Fall Guys, and I'm totally uh, cool with cutting it. I I I really like Ghost of Tsushima too, and I played a lot of the multiplayer and stuff too. But I'm cool with cutting it or I mean, others. Yeah, I like, stand further I don't think. It, it, it's one of those things like i i think the like the, I, i'm playing i played the game i'm still playing it by the way but I, I like i played a lot of the game already and like i played in Kurosawa Sar- mode that's gorgeous in color it's gorgeous um you know the gameplay's hit and miss in my opinion the side characters are are pretty good but um nothing great uh you know it it, it i like its presentation a lot but it, it's just i don't even think it's the best open world game this year so i just i'm cool with cutting it I think the like ghosts like strong point here is like its world is incredible. I think the actual world that they built for it is incredibly designed. Uh, it's and especially like how they hide like HUD elements with like gameplay stuff, which is great in some ways and kind of not great in other ways. But I I think like the world itself is incredible. It's the gameplay yeah. stuff. I'm like super not into like there's a lot of like real bugginess to like the stealth stuff and you could kind of cheese it like pretty hard sometimes um but yeah like it's the world that really kept me going in there and like exploring it and really the story i thought was like pretty kind of boring like i didn't i wasn't it's really extremely bland yeah, yeah mm-hmm. like, i wasn't Jin really is a terrible character I think it's all, the Jin, Jin isn't really all that like enticing he's okay but he's not any enticing didn't any of the other characters it also commits my number one gaming cardinal sin of tell you an entire story that it wants to tell you all the way up until the very last moment and then it's like well what do you want to do now as the player it's like no you've told me the story you want to tell me for 99 percent of this game don't present me with an option on how to tie a ribbon on this at the very end like Uh, tell me the story you want to tell me i hate that gears 5 did that too and it still bugs the heck out of me oh my god yeah yeah Uh, the games do that so often where it's like it tells a straightforward story and then it presents you an option it's like what i don't want to make an option here just yeah i feel tell a story i feel ghost does poorly what i think actually cyberpunk does a better idea where you are a cipher of this character this character is represented by you and the things that you do but i think cyberpunk tells a more compelling version of that where you could tell that the character is growing in certain aspects while with Jin, it just, just seems so bland and the choices you make just don't matter and it's just it's i don't know i i don't like this game <laughs> i'm just... the, i mean i i did my full go all in on this game like two episodes back but i just th- i mechanically i just do not understand what there is to find alluring about this game like it is so it is so just basic with like oh you see this bad guy well you have to fight them this way and if you don't well you're you, you're just going to smack your sword against their shield or whatever for a good five minutes before you break their stance. It's and funny you, can you say kill that. Like, it's also the same problem I have with Doom, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, um, it's the exact same well, problem. That's, that's exactly well, well, uh, right. I look forward to talking yeah. to you uh, about Ghost of Tsushima when I finally get around to playing it. It's like, like well, the thing about I, Ghost. I, the thing about Ghost of Tsushima though is like the game will flat out pause. Like you can be forty five hours into it, and if you are not attacking a certain enemy type with the type of stance that is designed to take that enemy out, the game will flat out pause and put up a notice on the screen. It'll say, mm. "Hey, did you know that you should probably switch to this stance?" It's like, "Yeah, I know. I've been playing this game for what? like cl- internal clock is at fifty hours now. I know yeah. what I'm doing." Like that stuff pissed me off with the game a lot. As far as the world stuff, like I really. Yeah, the world is beautiful, but they filled it with garbage. It's like f- chase forty foxes, take t- fifteen baths, write twenty five haikus. It's like, 
it's like just yeah there's a lot of dots all over the map but like the things you are doing they are novel to do a couple of times each and then you realize that you have to do them all 20 more times or in the case of the foxes 40 yeah. more times yeah, it's, it's more that i think it's like a really well designed world like it's, yes. it looks really cool and stuff like yeah. that. I not, you not that. really that the, act, the activities you're doing there. But that's, yeah. what, that's what like bothers me is that they build a beautiful like a little, world yeah. with nothing to do it's I, like i cool, really, like I really love the setting and the oh, art direction especially well, of <laughs> I knew that was gonna be somebody's response. I love, yeah. I love, I love the setting and the you know of, of Ghost of Tsushima and the world. Like it's beautiful, it looks great and stuff like that. I think just my sort of biggest disappointment, not disappointment, but just like my bi- sort of biggest sticking point with Ghost of Tsushima is yeah, it just it just kind of sort of felt like the typical sort of open world sort of formula. And it didn't really deviate from that in any meaningful ways that well, like I hoped it would. It felt like a game that came out in 2015 rather than 2020. Like it just felt very old. Yeah. At this point, and I know. I, 2000... I, I disagree. I during, disagree. During I this whole activity, game... like, God, I, I, I thought that activities like embrace like the Japanese culture and things like that. Like, granted, like, yeah, it's a lot because the map is big, but I don't know. And I, I always felt like I was being rewarded for what I was doing. And like, they're quick activities. It's not like something that you're like investing like thirty minutes into doing. So I, I never, I never really found any sort of impatience or like uh, anything like that with, uh, with the side activities uh, in that sense. Um, I but think yeah, that's I a did. good argument if you're just doing the main story, because then you can just kind of go from point A to point B with the story stuff, and it's like, oh, there's a fox right here on my way. I'll just bounce oh, off the beaten no, path. I... But when you're a completionist, I'm telling you, dude, by the time, because I know you are, by the time you get to the third <laughs> island, you are fucking tired of chasing yeah. foxes. Yeah. It gets so old. Like <laughs> I, want, I want 100% or two islands when I got to the third one. I'm like, I don't want to do this like anymore. <laughs> Don't even care it for gets, the platinum at this it point. Because the first, because you've completed the first one, haven't you, Cam? Entirely in uh, the kind first of island. Yeah, I'm on the yeah. island right now. Once I got to the, it wasn't until I got to the second that the fatigue like really started to wear in, and I was like, okay, I need to get really. It's like, how many goddamn different colored headbands can I get? Because this yeah, is not like, rewarding. <laughs> They're rewarding you with things, but like by that time you just have an entire inventory full of them, and you're like, okay, cool, I guess. Like, yeah, it just starts to really uh lose legs because i i agree with you i on the first island i did not hate that stuff as much as i did by the time i got to the third how how many of us played the the multiplayer because i never played the multiplayer i, I wanted to but i just i really liked it like i feel the fact that they gave that to people for free was fantastic yeah, like, yeah absolutely. it can get repetitive but it is a lot of fun playing with friends the level up system is a lot more intricate than i was expecting it to be and I feel like the multiplayer mode could have easily been like a ten, fifteen dollar add on that they charge people. And the fact that, that they didn't is you have to play you have to have the game though to play that, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So you saw the pace of the <laughs> to get that. No, I just want to make sure because there's game modes that do come separately. I'm just curious. Oh, you're talking like free yeah. like Halo's yeah. gonna be free yeah. to play multiplayer or whatever. Because you said people give free, I mean oh, yeah. Warzone. Like Warzone is yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Whatever Halo's gonna do. All right, so we're killing Ghost of Tsushima officially, right? Yeah, I'm okay. I with think that. we could. Yeah, it's beautiful and it's worth experiencing, but not strong enough to carry like, it to all. Yeah, I mean, like, Unless I am yeah. wrong, there are no million. It's no Sly it. Cooper. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> no. yeah, I it's, no, it's no infamous. Is anything Sly <laughs> Cooper though? Good. Die. Uh, so can true. we? Okay. Can we talk? I want to talk about this one for a minute, just because I feel like no one's played it. Can we talk about Wasteland Three? <sighs> yeah. Hello, I feel like Chris. <laughs> No, uh, I know Chris can, has played it, but like I'm just as a collective, like very little have played it. We can remove it. Um, like okay. I love it. It's great. It's one of the most reactive RPGs I have ever played. It's up there with you know Divinity and other such uh, games. But um, yeah, like it's not near the top of my list. There's better things. It's really good. I highly recommend it. It does some really interesting stuff, but not enough to carry it all the way. I think so. Yeah, safely remove that. Sure. And it's on Game Pass. Oh, 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 Murdod has voted for Wasteland oh, okay. 3 as his game of the year. <laughs> okay. uh, he says, uh, it was the most complete game that I played in 2020. If that doesn't make sense, let me put it in this way. Wasteland 3 is like three is like a character that the player has upgraded all of its skills to a very high degree. It's almost flawless in each one of its key aspects that the game represents, and it is very fascinating to me. 
thoughts on there. He says it's, it's the most complete game of the year. I don't know if you agree with that necessarily, Chris. I had a bunch of bugs, so in that regard, <laughs> <laughs> I can. I guess I can see where it's coming from. Like it does, you know, tell a complete story entirely with that. It's like a self-contained little. Here is what is going on in this post-apocalyptic world state. Like this one state of, you know, the U.S. Effectively, and it's like you shape it according to. <clears throat> More choices and everything like that and then that's it it's done it's concluded and yeah i can i guess i can see that but yeah i like there's better that the, my problem is it's just there's better unfortunately as good as it is it is uh yeah i don't think many people on staff played this one even though it's, it's like a free it's one of them free games that microsoft and i say free it's, it's on game pass it's on Game Pass. So is Desperados well, 3, though. I yeah. have been wanting to play this game. Which one? Like, to play Desperados really? 3 is also is Game Pass. I'm is it sure. on Game Pass now? Is it really? Is it really? I think it's a... Uh, Maybe on the thought, PC I thought, version. I thought, I thought it was the first looking... party game. I thought it was the first party title. No, it's a... It's it's a... Is it a it's THQ Nordic game? Yes, it's THQ Nordic. Okay. okay. I thought both were. But wait a second. I, yeah, was, okay. a, I was about to check because I, I, I want to play that one. You got all these people like, wait a minute, run into the right <laughs> across the floor in the background of their computer. Put it back uh, on the list. Of course, it's the guy wearing the Xbox shirt. Uh, it has a I free want, trial. So I want, I want Ryan to okay. talk more. So what about Half-Life Alex? Does, should that even Hold on. So we're killing or... Wasteland? I think we're pretty settled on that. Okay, sorry, Murdad. You're really gonna come for Half Life now? Nice, but, uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Well, oh, speaking man. of games that like none of Michael us have played, Michael is like way off base here. Michael is like, hey, everybody, let's point the cannon at or you. Let's point it at Half Life. <laughs> no, you know why? I'm with you know I'm with Mike. I've been trying to get. I've been trying to find a, a second to squeeze this one in here, but I How cannot. I cannot. I cannot in good conscience have a game that has a uh, what's what is the cost barrier of uh to entry for half-life alex what's how much money for uh, all minimum, these other games though 360 like, minimum 360 says the dude who built a pc to play cyberpunk over, 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 the, over, <laughs> over the two years i'd like to point out but well, i would just like to say that half-life is a uh, much better running game than uh, cyberpunk 2077 Dang is so, you know, it's really... well, so can you play can you play very low can you play half-life on a quest Aren't yes those, like 300 yes yeah, right. with the link okay. with okay. the link there's 300 dollars okay. okay. 300 dollars okay. I'm just saying though that like a PS5 is five hundred dollars, a PS4 is four hundred dollars. Okay. I think with budget. the Steam Link, the three hundred dollar Quest Two, and then the game itself, you'd be it'd be about four fifty to five hundred in total. Yeah, it's around the same. Uh, roughly you know. about a, the new well, stimulus well, check. I feel so. like yeah. yeah. Oh, I've been that's calling the new stimulus for Xbox today. That's actually that's a great idea. I might actually do that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Okay, so I was I was mixed up then. I I was still under the impression that you could only play it on the Valve Index. Like, it, what no. was that the? Yeah, you can play. I played it. I played it on a uh, original Oculus Rift. So oh, yeah, okay. you can play it on like pretty much anything. All right. Yeah. Why are we we'll talking about it? So we'll put the video up so we can see the footage. So yeah, Ryan, Half-Life Alex, why is it good? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Half-Life Alex, I think out of all the Game of the Year nominees, like this is my top contender for Game of the Year. Um, you know, and this is the third, this is the third 10 I've ever given in my time with the site here. So I think that says something about- And Ryan's been I, writing for the site since 1990. <laughs> um, no, I think, I, I love this game, I adore it. And I think for, you know, when I was putting my list together, like Half-Life just still continues to stick out for me as like one of the best experiences I've had to play this year. I think it really, what sticks out to me about Half-Life, and I kind of acknowledge that Half-Life probably is not going to go super far, so I'm going to give it its like two minutes just to shine. Um, I think it really melds what I love about like story-based games and it has like an exceptional story. It has great visuals. Like obviously, like I love Half-Life, but even if you're not necessarily familiar with the Half-Life universe, it, it tells a tremendous story. And I think it merges all that extremely well with VR and, you know, just the ways that it adds an extra level of immersion and it just, even the simple things like, like the fact that you can, you know, you, uh, cause you can only usually hold two grenades in your, or you can have like one grenade in your hand and then one like a side thing. But if you pick up a bucket, you can put all the grenades in the bucket and carry around with you. Like just those simple little things that you can sort of like, you know, it's it just like it alters your way of thinking because you can do things in this game that you wouldn't normally do in a regular first person shooter. And I just think this game brilliantly uses VR to elevate what you're doing in the game and the story it's telling. Mm -hmm. um, and especially just because like the game really at the beginning, it kind of gives you all of the tools that you'll use. It gives you all the weapon, like the weapons that you have from this pretty much from the start. It gives you um, all the 
tools you use to sort of interact with the world. And rather than just giving you like new upgrades and things like that, there are upgrades, but they're like kind of superfluous and don't really do a ton. The game, what it does really well is it sort of uh, finds new ways to present the puzzles and stuff that you're doing and sort of with the tools that you already have and just sort of gives you new ways of thinking, how do I interact with the space? How do I interact with this environment and all that? So that's that's really like why Half-Life continues to stick it out to me. And I know that the barrier against it is having a VR headset, but really I think if you already have a VR headset or if you're planning to get one, like this is the game you need to get. I think it's really like, mm-hmm. this is the game that sort of showcases VR at its best. And, you know, obviously there are other games that are like, you know, Beat Saber or Super Hot that do it really well. But I think Half-Life really is like the best example of what you can do in VR and <clears throat> what kind of games you can play with it. It is so hard to go back to playing other VR games after playing Half-Life Alex because of the yeah. level of interactivity. Like, it is wild, the stuff you can do in that game. I'm only halfway through, mostly because <laughs> I stop and, like, try to stupid stuff, like trying to put a bucket on my head to see if it can stop bullets <laughs> and picking up a uh, picking up a frying pan, picking up a frying pan to see if I can block bullets like I'm in uh, PUBG, like... Anything you can imagine, almost I should say almost anything, because there's been a couple of places where I was like, oh, I really wish I could have done that. Uh, but otherwise, like anything you can imagine, you can try. And it doesn't all work. Like the frying pan does not stop bullets, unfortunately. <laughs> but, you know, it's still fun to try out all that different stuff. And I have not played a game. I mean, Boneworks, I think, comes close mm-hmm. to that same level yeah. of interactivity, but oh, yeah. nothing else. Like I played um, Medal of Honor uh, above and beyond. And all the time I was like, reaching for stuff to try to grab it, thinking it was going to be the same, and you can't... It's, it doesn't have anywhere close to that level of interactivity. I think yeah. it's a huge, a huge step forward for VR. Yeah, I think especially just because, like, Half-Life especially, like, the, the past games have always done really well at immersing you in these really, like, detailed environments and, you know, these, like, worlds that feel really alive. And I think VR just brings so much more to that, and it really, like, feels like, you know, this was an experience that utilizes VR at its best. I don't think we should cut it yet. I'll, I'll go. I'm, on. I'll, I, I'll I'm, agree. With I'm you. with you guys. I'm I like, agree. like if this is the best VR game ever made, for it to not make the top ten, I even though we're not ordering these at the end of the day, I know for it not to make the even top ten, I think is like pretty bad. <laughs> for a little bit. I, I, I don't know if it's gonna win. That's the thing. Yeah, I think it deserves to be in. For it. I think for it me, deserves like, to be in deeper convos. Personally, yeah. For, yeah, I, for me personally, like. I'm not going to vote for a game that I haven't played just because, you know, like I like I respect all your guys' judgments. But like if someone like, Judgment. yeah, oh, hey. you know, that, I, I, I no, said no, the no. and but like it's just one of those things where like, uh, you know, just because I am like told, oh, this game's really good. That doesn't mean like I'm going to agree at the end of the day when I, you know, so I don't want to support something ignorantly in that sense. But like with that being said, like there are games that I have played that I genuinely believe like should not be on this list of uh, Half-Life Alex, like getting to this like top 10 spot uh, or like this top 10 segment. Um, so I'm cool with keeping it. Could I hop in and throw one of those out that I think you are, I know fond of, but I don't think you're going to die for here. And sure. it's going to be Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I know you love that game, and I know you think that is the best of the new remake series, the reboot series. And I know you think it's one of the best in the entire series. But I also know that I don't think it's going to be making like your top two or three here. And I think you, above everybody else, is one of the most passionate about it of this group. Let me think for a sec. <laughs> uh, you guys talk about something else because. Honestly, like, has anybody else played this? If so, I, played, I, about I have Assassin's not Creed? played Valhalla yeah. yet. I've, yeah, I've I really, have. really I've played maybe to. an hour or two. I want to say at I this played, point. I think I played twenty hours of it. I played about twenty hours as well. Twenty twenty five around there. I'll okay, skip this so one. For, I'm gonna do the for, sensible thing and buy when it's thirty bucks. For Dang. me, that's correct. <laughs> there are games that I know that. Some of y'all are going to be rooting for hard that I think that Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a better game than. Like, that I think deserves game of the year over those games. I don't think that Assassin's Creed, like, at the end of the day, will be like one of the last games in that conversation. But I do know, like, of the games that, that likely will be based off of our, like, the discussions in our Discord, I think Assassin's Creed Valhalla is, like, better than those games or, like, a specific game. Uh, so, with that, like, so take that for what you will, I guess. Um, but 
it's like, just it's, it's getting it's getting to the it, point it, where it's, it's going to be it's, hard it's, cut time every yeah. single but the thing is, is that like yeah. if, if if we're talking about this then there's a game then i want to bring up that game how, despite how many people i know how, that are going to be running how, for it. before we and before, I, I feel like we're it's too early for that before we get to That's that let's talk about the reason I, I know hold on, the reason I brought up Valhalla though is because, like I said, I know you're the one who is super passionate about it, and I know everybody else here is not. And also, I, I guess it's kind of a spoiler: we have no mail-ins for it either. Um, so that's where we're at uh, with Valhalla. Basically, but, if Cam doesn't think it's game of the year, then I don't then think anybody here no is going to vouch for would. it, and nobody else on the mail-in. I think it's the, the point Logan's making. Like, yeah, like, like. like Assassin's Creed Valhalla is in my top five games of this year. So is it your like, number that, one? Yeah, like no, that's no doubt. You guys know well, what then, my number one is, and I like again. There's like there's how many games are left? There's a little. Yeah, but this isn't ten. your 13, This isn't 14. your game of the year. This yeah, is I know. But what I'm saying is like there are games on here that I would like that per, for me like that I think that should be cut before Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Okay. But I guess the only one who cares about this game. My, yeah, that's my point. Is so, like if you're the if you're if you're more passionate than anybody. You that's know, my, why are you asking? We're point, asking you to make the we're, we're asking, make asking you to make the like, yeah. It. Tell us why. Say Tell it. us why you think it should be it should be up for a game of the year. Yeah, that's why I threw this. To you. Uh, I th I think it is uh, an incredible open world game. I think the story uh, is the best that the series has had since uh, like Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, like the Ezio trilogy. Um, I think the game is gorgeous. Um, it adds like like the world feels alive based off like the interactions that you have in like certain side quests and stuff like that where there's like a side quest where you find a cat and then the cat like just ends up uh like chilling in your boat for the rest of the game and like things like that like that things that like make you feel like that this world is actually evolving as you play through it um the there's actual like parts in the game that uh that legitimately surprised me like whether it was like a location i went to or uh like certain interactions I had with uh, characters, I, I again like I don't want to like go into spoilers because it, it's really that like cool that it's like I would I would be I would be mad if I if someone told me like what you what happens in that game. Um, I think the combat is good. I think the boss fights are uh, really fun and engaging. Um, <laughs> like really outside of it, outside of it just being another assassin's creed game which i know is just like for people that's enough to be like oh then we shouldn't like you know i'm not gonna like it or i shouldn't take it as seriously it's a phenomenal game like i would have given it a 9.5 if it didn't have so many bugs when i played it like that's the one thing that was stopping me from giving it a 9.5 like it, it's one of those it's the first assassin as someone who like loves the <laughs> assassin's creed franchise uh like a top probably my like top three in my top three favorite franchises like it's the first Assassin's Creed game since Brotherhood, where if someone told me that their favorite game was Valhalla, I would understand. Like I would, res like I would one hundred percent like respect that opinion because of how good that game is. I, 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 I don't I, like. That's I don't know. That's all I, I've got. Like if you guys still want to cut it now, then sure. I don't think but, it. So here, this is this is the point I was getting at though. Is like I don't think anybody here is going to vouch for it in the same regards you are. And if it's going to get down to a point where it's going to be you. And there's a couple other things, not to point to you specifically, but I know there's a couple other things specifically that you on here are passionate about compared to some others that you have been vouching for people to play in the last couple of weeks. And so I don't yeah. know how you feel about Valhalla compared to those other ones that we're going to get to in a few minutes. And if you would want uh, to nix Valhalla here and move on to something else, or I don't know where you're at. Because I know you're going to be the one who's standing up for Valhalla the most. Um, and like I said, we have uh, no mail-ins for this either, so... Before uh, to answer that, let's. Uh, I'm gonna answer that question with another question. Uh, can we talk about Star Renegades and see where people are on on that? Sure. Because it, I would rather like if if people really haven't played Star Renegades, I would rather like cut that first than Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Star Renegades is very good. Um, it is a very good roguelite. It is not my favorite of this year, um, but I think it has like just a very immersive like sort of world and just like the whole gameplay loop is just really great. Um, the combat is really great. Um, you know, kind of, you know, not not anything that we haven't seen before, but it does every everything that it does, it does it extremely well. And I love the sure. art style. It has it has mm -hmm. a very just like distinct visual style Control. to it. And I, yeah, yeah, and it looks great. Um, it is, you know, it is a, an amazing game. I actually do love it. Um, 
I think it should stay on a little longer. Really? Uh, that makes I, me I, actually really happy. So I, actually, great. I actually think it should stay on um, longer than Valhalla. <laughs> that, <laughs> didn't expect that. Did not expect that at all. <laughs> in the back. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Wow. Hold on. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Star Renegades is higher on my list than Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Mm -hmm. I just didn't think that people would be for Star like uh, like Star Renegades as much as Compared Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Valhalla. Yeah. because I know that like some people have taken the time to play it, and I know that some people are like kind of mixed on it. So, or like, you know, some people are like, oh, it's good. It's just not like, I mean, you know, I know like Chris and Ricky are kind of on that page. Yeah. But then there's like Sam and Cam and me and, uh, you know, that are like, su and like, I, I think Scott played a little bit of it too. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, you know, some. so. Yeah, so this like, is going to sound like, oh, go ahead. So, yeah, it's just one of those things like, you know, I'm cool with, I'm cool with out of those two. Because I know that Spirit Fair is another one I'm championing. And I, that's, that is like way higher of like importance to me than these two games so like you know yeah this is gonna sound like a dig on star renegades but it's not but this is my fourth favorite roguelike this year but that's just because they've been so good like <laughs> i think it's a good game um i just think i like other roguelikes a lot more it's like in 2018 when there was like a metroidvania coming out every single month that was yeah. like huge yeah yeah mm. So yeah, like I'm okay. kind of the same way. Like I love the art style of Star Renegades. I'm a big fan of kind of the turn-based RPG aspects of it and everything. But looking at the other roguelikes that came out this year, it, other roguelikes came out outside of that in Hades. Bullet you had two. this. You had Risk Bullet of Rain two. two. You had Rogue Legacy two. Rogue Has Legacy two. For a um, while though, Risk of Rain two. No, no it, I mean it's uh, been a no. Yeah, it's been a while. 1.0 release was this year. One oh, two. Rogue, Rogue Legacy <clears throat> two don't count because that's in early. That's I'm counting it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, but no, I'm just saying, not necessarily that, that I would include those on the list, but personally, yeah. I got like way more hooked into those games outside of, uh, out of um, uh, Star Renegades. Mm. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm the same. Like just star renegades has a pretty interesting way of doing its battle systems and stuff the progression system is pretty good i like it as a roguelike i like the art um the writing obviously non-existent writing, what is no, there it yeah. is awful like it just commits all sorts of cardinal sins and references and it's pretty cliche and pretty happens. much everything it's, it does yeah yeah, yeah no, and, I, I agree with that completely yeah, yeah. Um, but again the gameplay is good but like it didn't like it really didn't get its hooks in me like so many other roguelikes have this year comparatively. I don't know if it's just because, you know, I see what mm -hmm. the battle system is doing. I've seen the games it's clearly inspired by like even the older ones and just go, yeah, it's an interesting take on it, but I don't really think it's all that. And I did get to a lot of situations where I'm just like, you know, I am just kind of doing the same thing over and over in these battles. They're not nearly as malleable as the system could allow for, I guess. So that, yeah, like I'd rather go back and play something like, you know, Dead Cells or Risk of Rain 2 or I Hades. I still like Dead Cells yeah. more than Star Renegades. That's still my favorite. Yeah. Like, but, yeah. like if I'm going to go back and play a rogue, like it's not going to be Star Renegades at this point. So that's where I'm at, unfortunately. So what I'm hearing from this roundabout is that we're wiping Star Renegades and Valhalla both. <laughs> like I know and, it was and, like a pick em, but like, and I'm, hmm. Like we have to start making cuts, and this is not even this is not picking on you, Cam, in any way particular. But these are the ones that I feel like the room is least passionate about, honestly, because and I feel like we're going to start digging into the ones that people are going to start standing up for way harder. And I feel like it's worth saying that regardless of how you know early on into this list a game is taken out, that doesn't mean any yeah. less of them I mean, we killed ghost of tsushima pretty quickly and that's like a lot of people's game of the year yeah. <laughs> it's still, it's still yeah. the, the, the yeah. fact of the matter is fact of the matter is all these games are on this list for a reason yeah, yeah. We've, all we've gone through four massive discussions cut everything else out of this year to bring this shorter mm -hmm. list and anything here no matter how much we cut it or bag on it or laugh how about much. it, it's worth your time. Yeah. All of these yeah, games yeah. are worth your time. Yeah. So, so I, mean, well, I want to stress that as well. You know? So I'm going to wipe Star, uh, I'm gonna wipe Star Renegades. Cam, I will say you're evangelizing about it. Has absolutely put it on my backlog, and I will be playing that game at some point, um, especially once I get more distance I, from 
the game that should not be named at the moment that is also a roguelike um Um, i have it i know right now so i'm ready to play uh i know this is probably ian's game of the year but is what do people think about so are we wiping valhalla 2 now as well are you good with that cam no but do what you guys do (laughs) (laughs) just get rid of the gameplay scott Uh, give give it a salute give it a 21 gun my dude I'm no. actually really excited to play Valhalla when I get a freaking moment. That, that is the game I'm moving on to past One Cyberpunk. Day. I just finished Cyberpunk. I'm done. I'm now going back to Valhalla. I think I'm going to get to Valhalla sooner because Cyberpunk sucks. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's that silver lining. Okay, uh, so one thing. Okay, so there, there's one. Okay, so now that we you know broke my heart, there's one thing I really want to talk about right now. I want to talk about Persona Five Royal. Okay. Are we considering that game? Okay. Oh boy. Uh, I'm so happy I'm gonna go. I'm happy actually, I can sit I out of this one. I'm with Cam no, on this. Actually, no, I, don't I don't think we, we should have Persona Five Royal Logan. here. Persona Five Royal is the best video <laughs> game of the year, everybody. Uh, I, I get the <laughs> argument against it, but it's the like, best video game that Logan. came out in the year 2020. Logan, and it's Logan. as simple as that for me. Like, Logan, I came Logan, in Logan. not knowing what game I was going to champion, but this is the game I am championing Logan, because Logan. it is one of the 10 best video games I've ever played in my entire life. Logan, Logan, it's good. Logan I like, I outside of my number one game, I agree with you. I agree with you that Persona 5 Royal is a masterpiece. It 100% is. But it it like the differences between Persona 5 and Royal are really not a lot is not significant to the point where it feels like a new game it 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 really doesn't sure but even the base p5 content that is in there and is being repackaged and put out into to consume again is so much much better than anything else that came out this year did we just say the same about tetris effect connected uh yes exactly I don't know, maybe <laughs> can we just call this all exactly a sham and just call metal gear solid 3 uh, snake hey, eater the best game i played this year because it was what the I'm best saying, game I what i'm saying what i'm saying is like, Shin, the, like in the base game stuff the only differences are some like tweaks with like like bosses and combat. going to bed i will say uh, to go on the same point, though, bed? you know it's just quality of life great. improvements outside of like the stuff with kasumi and maruki and granted like those are things sure but like when you think about like how big of a game Persona is, that's it really isn't a lot, and it's like and honestly, like the royal stuff isn't that great. It's I disagree really with that vehemently. It's, it's I, not- I well, I'll say I don't want to undermine my own pick. I will say the way it flows from the chalice stuff to the other stuff is kind of like awkward yes. because one feels yes. super high, like oh my gosh, we gotta fight god the and then the next one's like ah, let's let's tie up this loose end afterward yeah it, so i will feel like, like the game feels over when you beat the god of control like, but the thing that i liked about that is that it provided a nice like it, when you look at the whole stupid rising action climax falling the falling in too many stories is basically we killed the big bad guy and then the game is over it, it's, or it's not even a game it's like that in a lot of pieces of media like uh what was I, I was watching like a stupid video essay randomly last night about Goblet of Fire, and it's like Cedric's dead. And then the next scene is goodbye, everybody. I'll see you at Hogwarts next year. There's just like no despair. Like it's so, there's not enough time to breathe between them. And the thing I liked about the royal content is that it felt like there was more time to breathe. And like once the game was then over, it felt like it had come to a more like full conclusion compared to how I know base persona five ends which is they really start speeding through those weeks pretty quickly and i know they put in some scenes there which do the same thing i'm talking about but i really felt like those extra couple two or three weeks they pack into the game really allow you to kind of decompress yes you're still dealing with a pretty major situation that has presented itself but it is allowing you to get into that groove one last time and really kind of they clean do the everything exact up. Same thing once you're done with the royal content it just skips to valentine's day it, it does it do that yeah up. Yeah, so it's the exact same thing. It's just it happens after the royal stuff, which is technically the new end of the, the third, game. Tri- the third semester or whatever. So that, yeah. It's like you're like that. Like so, that argument doesn't really hold much weight because it does the exact same thing with royal. But it. Uh... All right, I, 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 blew, I knew this was going to go, but I got blowed again. Um, I was waiting for it. <laughs> David Gill writes in and says, 
Uh, Persona 5 Royal is my game of the year for this reason. No other game has impacted me as much as Persona 5 Royal. I never got around to playing the original, but Royal is a perfect blend of an excellent story, fantastic characters, a fun world to explore, and so much style and personality. The added story con content also adds some cool twists that made me rethink the story. Overall, it's a fantastic JRPG that will inspire many RPGs to come. So, to me, it seems like everyone who has never played persona 5 royal says that it's the game of the year because they never played the original in the first place <laughs> yes yeah yeah i think so, that's like, the big, that's I, the big thing to... that oh no <laughs> oh, no 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 <laughs> i'm so Sam excited for you guys that claim to Bam, what? <laughs> He says, yeah, Persona 5 Royal is my top pick. The game at builds on the already near-perfect Persona 5. It refines the gameplay of the original, adds some fantastic and engaging new story content, and helps to build on Atlas's brilliant RPG. Although it's not a brand new game, it does enough differently and adds enough new content to make it feel incredibly fresh. I do disagree. Now, Mike. <laughs> no, I, I don't disagree. know about I, that. When I was, oh, let me hear this. When I was playing through the base game of Persona 5, like, cause I played, you know, I played Persona 5 in 2018 and like, I wanted to replay Persona 5, but like in five years minimum. So because of how long the game is. So when like, I had to play through the base game again with very little new things in it, I was, ups I was frustrated. Cause I was just like, I don't need to play this 70, you know, for me, it was like 70 hours worth of content to get to the new stuff. Like I, you know, and I get like the way that the game is like, <clears throat> the way it's built like you have to do that but it was still one of those things like i i like the base game just did not have enough new stuff to keep that to keep me really really interested because they have it all at the end of the game it, it, I, I will that's say that's not true i will say the two big things that do happen in the course of the game that i thought was actually pretty cool was the fact that they did tweak the gameplay in terms of the actual mechanics of fighting uh yeah. when it comes to the baton uh pass uh, feature yeah. the way that they've that wasn't in the base game no you it just, was but it wasn't like you unlock it in the, the vanilla game it's yeah you unlock okay. it it's not like the main it's like the main focus okay yeah okay. yeah it's not like the main mechanic so the fact that that is so early on introduced i think freshened up the game for me and to be able to go through so as much as i did that and obviously the challenges that you now get in the velvet room i thought was a lot of fun that they introduced early on uh, when you fight um the different challenges from the twins i i was happy that they had those additional bonuses in there to help me level up as well um so it's great the... stuff that they add to the game but yeah. like the main thing is like the story stuff and like for me the story stuff really wasn't that uh that enticing like i like maruki as a uh, as a character i think maruki's um, awesome i think the themes they present at the end of that game are awesome i think the fact that he is i'm trying not to spoil certain things yeah the fact that his pursuit is one that is not necessarily uh bad is kind of interesting and like makes you because up to that point the thing i really liked about that final stuff is that e all the other people that you take on before that are like fucking awful villains. yeah they're like they're like uh caricatures of evil <laughs> in yeah, some ways like yeah. they're just all grossly terrible people and then you get to the sure. person at the end and it's like this guy i know is not bad but he's got bad things that he wants to do it, it like it presented like a really it recontextualized everything that had came before it in a really interesting way that I was not expecting because really like going into it, I was like, okay, we're just going to be one more super evil person. Like they kind of tease yeah. it a little bit earlier with the Kasumi stuff. When she first unlocks her whole phantom thieves ordeal, it's like, okay, this is clearly a palace of somebody who's probably pretty evil and hasn't shown themselves yet. And then that's kind of not really the case, but also is, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I thought that entire arc was like pretty fascinating it's, and was like a much desired change of pace, especially like I said, like it starts off with like, oh, like the whole game just gets gradually more insane as you ramp up. It's like, oh, like small time gym teacher dude who like sexually harasses the hell out of people. And then it's like you're fighting a, a freaking drug lord or a gangster and then you're fighting god by the end of it like it just like steadily like gets more ridiculous as you play and then the final yeah. thing they tie it up with is something like way different and way more interesting i think to, um, yeah. to back no, up cam on I, that though to back up cam on that that is all stuff that i experienced many years ago as well 
the guy, the way yeah, that's the yeah. crux of this argument is that <laughs> for a lot of us like th it's great that people are now experiencing and getting like the true version as it were because you know there's no reason to go back to vanilla p5 if you've got royal there isn't but yeah. a lot of us do love that game but have already played it years ago and that's i think the question of does it deserve to be up here again <laughs> is the new stuff worth worth it putting it back in the ring for you know a contest which it probably won a whole bunch of back then anyway it was my it was game our 2017 game of the year and, so. and, and it was my game of the year it was my game of the year then yeah. too yeah like <laughs> in in retrospect Same. i would have given persona 5 my 2017 game of the year if i played it in 2017 100 but what i'm saying is like uh but and the thing is is that a lot of the things that i want to talk about that i really have a problem with in the royal content is obviously spoilers um but like there are just like some fun to, fundamental things that the that the you know the antagonist's plan is in that that just fundamentally does not work and and so like so it's just like no no i don't like this at all and so like and again i just i just feel like it's a like a b grade ending to an already a plus ending if that makes sense like it, it, I, again like i i don't think like i don't hate the royal stuff i just if if, if, I, if you're gonna say oh do i like it or do i dislike it i would lean more towards dislike but I still think that there's some good stuff in there. I think that there's some good character moments. Um, you know, I still enjoyed the gameplay and things like that. It's just, there was just some things that, it just felt like it wasn't a part of the original vision of the game. Like that was in vanilla P5. So it's just, that, that's kind of like where my headspace is. Again, I think the game's a masterpiece. I think it's a phenomenal game, but I just don't think it should be considered for game of the year because it just isn't, it's, it's just Persona 5 again. With some new stuff like yeah like had i played this had royal been the first my first experience with persona 5 i would be right there with you logan because it is fantastic but Same. like cam said because we went through 70 to 100 hours of content already i but wasn't we... a huge fan of the royal stuff either like the added on story content i like the game playing quality of life tweaks they did more so than some of the royal story elements at the end but I'm like, I, I've gone, I've gone for this journey. It's kind of like the the special OVA that comes out a year, couple years later to reinvigorate things. But um, I'm kind of this so is number three for the year. I understand, I understand right. that argument, but I, simultaneously, and I understand that I can't speak to it because I didn't play the base bit game, so I, I can't have the same argument that like Sam can, where Sam's like, "Hey, yeah, I played the whole game again, and yeah, I think the new stuff is substantial enough to where it should be game of the year." Um, okay, I'm vouching at number one. We've got two other people that are vouching at number one, um, and I know that, like I said, we're not going to turn this into a vote thing. But I think we should move on for a second. No, 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 no. Keep no. It on for now. You already have you have uh, four people here that are telling you that like they disagree with Sam when they say that it feels that there's enough content there to feel new. It, it, we don't feel that way. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that have it's just one of those things. Like I I know like I can imagine how this hurts you because again I think Persona Five Royal is a masterpiece i, I no, really i mean do. it doesn't hurt me because well, i knew I, that i was coming in with like the odd stack i knew the arguments i was coming against no, it's not that the odds stacked against you or anything like that like but I mean, it's they, just... and it's i don't take it i'm not taking it like personally or anything it's like okay if i'm coming in and i'm backing persona 5 royal what's the argument against it the argument against it is this game already came out and you just never played it and this is all new to you but not to us and i get that yeah um yeah it's like i'm I, I'll, I'll, I'll say this I'm fine wiping it. I, I I I don't want to, but it's not going to win. Like I know that, so I'm willing to kill it here if it helps us to move it's on. Good, it's such a great yeah. game. I'm just it's happy we have a new Persona game. Five fan, and this fanboy's name is Logan Moore. I want to give a little shout out. Yeah, to that. like seriously, it's one <laughs> of my ten right. favorite games yeah. of all time. There is now a stinking. It, it, there is it, a Persona yeah. piece of art on my wall yeah, next I, to I my desk in that room now. And that was the only art uh, in this I whole house. I spent two hundred dollars on <laughs> vinyl last week for this game's stupid soundtrack. <laughs> I don't own a vinyl. They're fucking slacks. That's why you. Fucking, mm, I don't own a vinyl player, player, and I just oh, bought vinyl, vinyl for this stupid game. <laughs> I <laughs> truly, buy one now. Truly okay. simping for Persona. Yes, uh, I think it is uh, like up there. Now with you Knights just don't have to play the other Persona games in a. Yeah, like, I played half of four. four. Yeah. I just you to play I, 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 I am, am going to go back. Or's, or's better, in my opinion. It's that saying. is true. 
I played okay. like half of four, I, and I, I yes. will not say it ever resonated okay. with me on that same level. But yeah, Persona games really are like Doctor Who, man. You just got you got your pick your one. Up. Yeah. Per All right. Yeah. So if we're if I'm yeah. taking the anime game down oh, with me, no, 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 no. We're taking down it, another it's anime. Too game. Early. It's too early. It's too early for this. Yeah, not what? Too early. Not oh, early. It's too early. It's too early. It's too early. It's too early. Twenty twenty finger hit thirteen sentinels. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, I was about to say, like, no, you don't. No, you don't. The whole um, so I think 13 I Sentinels can go. I know everybody here is, like, pretty uh, warm to hot on it. I know Chris, yeah, I, Chris is really hot on it. Very I, played, hot. I, played, I, played, I played all of 13 Sentinels. I don't know if uh, anyone else played all I'm, like, through. eight hours in, and shit's I really did. getting okay, weird, yeah. and, like, people are turning I mean, out to be other people. It's weird. Yeah. Like I'm kind of in yeah. for it, but it's like I will say I will say this: I am like crazy. really wanting to play this game, so please don't spoil it for yeah. me. In the, in the oh, yeah. So like the short of it is, I think this the like by the time I finished the story, I had a gist of what this what the narrative was, but I could not tell you everything because it it gets way too like web threads and like crazy like you think kingdom hearts is ridiculous like play this fucking game <laughs> it's all in one that. game and oh, no is, is there well, time travel yes. and uh yes. and, uh, uh the thing is but it's really fascinating it's still really fascinating it's it, it's always like uh, it always has that fascination th to make you keep going like you're, you're never like oh i'm not interested in what's going on you're always just like okay i want to know what's ha happening next but they introduce things at different times because there's 13 different characters that you play as and they all have their own stories. Um, and then the, there's the RTS stuff and it's really unbalanced. Like if you if you have like, pe like uh, the people that can do the sentry guns, mm -hmm. you just have them play sentry guns all over the place and then you win. Like it's that easy. Um, but like the RTS stuff is fun. Like, cause I, you know, I heard uh, originally that it was really bad. And then I started playing. I was like, I like this. It's just not balanced. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's really all. All the game is. You know, I, I really enjoyed it. I don't know if it'll be on my top ten this year, but I, I really kind of have to like sit down and just kind of, you know, think about games that uh, just missed the list, and you know, just kind of reconsider everything. But I could see it coming on my top ten for this year just because of like how different of an experience it is. But I definitely don't think it's like game of the year. I'm sorry. I'm Dude. laughing because I'm catching up on Ryan's spicy beef. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because this is the second video in a row where Mike has just randomly busted out a fucking tech deck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's like it's like a it's like one of those like a fidget spinner fidget for me. Spinner. Like I just I are you, like it. Are you doing right? kickflips on your desk right now? I was. I was doing slappy, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I was also mean... waiting for the Among Us imposter. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I, I wait for it too. Coming. That's what I figured. Right. Yeah. yeah. Did thank you. Write a seven-page paper about why this game is the <laughs> best game in the world. <laughs> Ian Agosa writes in, and he asks you to buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Let's go. Yeah, I've been waiting for ages. Oh, shit. Fuck yeah. Oh, Someone oh, say God. it's a masterpiece Patrick for a soundtrack. Some will say it's a masterpiece for its soundtrack, the story, the characters, the themes, the beautiful 2D artwork. I, I say it's for all of these reasons, but none of them at the same time. The story and characters aren't particularly original, and plenty of past Japanese games already explored the themes of 13 Sentinels. It's not about how the game is built. It's about how the game lets you build it, something very rare in games. Simultaneously, depending on how you build your puzzle, you can easily figure out most of the game's secrets in a few hours. But it only gets more interesting, as unlike most mystery fiction, it doesn't end once you, the reader, have solved the mystery. As it instead deals with how the characters will cope with the mysteries. 13 Sentinels is a typical Japanese game. Typical Japanese game. The protagonist pilot Mecha while being naked in the cockpits. And yet it's very accessible for people unfamiliar with Japanese pop culture thanks to the game mainly being set in the 80s and being written like an 80s Japanese pop culture story too. With inspirations known by everyone in the West, it teaches you why Japanese games are unique and why games as a whole are unique too. I had no intention of playing 13 Sentinels. <laughs> <laughs> that has not changed. You more like 
I that wish has... this man reviewed this video game. Like, I, I wish I wish he had done that. So I, I want to. I mean, I do have I, I do have some responses off. to what he's saying. Uh, first off, like I get what he's saying by like building the characters. What he means by like building the story and stuff like that, because basically you can uh, like as long as you meet the requirements uh, for like the a character's like next part of the story you can basically choose whichever character you want to go so the story is kind of built depending on which characters you play as first like you know each chapter um i don't think that like hugely would make a difference through through my personal experience of playing through the game um but it is cool that is a thing i mean it's i don't know like i I don't know. It, it kind of reminds me of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Like, yeah, you have three characters you can choose from. You can go any order you want, you know, and then you get the story that way. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, so that's fine. Um, I do also think that some of the stories for some of the characters uh, just kind of abruptly end. Like, I feel like there wasn't a real solid conclusion for each character's story. And it's just like, oh, we're getting into battle now against these kaijus. And like, that's that's kind of it. Um yeah again like i think it's i think it's a really great game i just i don't know i, I definitely don't think it's uh uh what ian says <laughs> chris give us your rant ricky do you want to say anything first i think you should go first chris okay because <laughs> i think i'm just going to say a lot of things that you can say better okay so um i'll just preface this first if this gets cut i will be sad but i will understand because it's not top of my list however i maintain that this is the most important game i've played this year not the best the most important for many of the reasons that ian said in that it really does i think as a whole it moves video games as a medium forward like it shows a story that could not be told out of video games you know the kind of multi-character non-linear non-sequential kind of thing where you can mix and match and change it up and go back and refer to various things you could not do this as any other kind of medium which is not the same for a hell of a lot of other games that we'll probably be talking about later tonight right so yeah, yeah, you know what's yeah, coming. What, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll talk about somewhere that. far away. Uh, and Neil Druckmann I... feels a disturbance. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so thirteen turns, right? Yeah, like again, I think this is a fantastic showcase of you know, like moving it forward as an art form, if you want to get into that kind of thing. But also, just you know, it it does use everything at its disposal. It mm -hmm. uses video games as a medium to tell a story that could not be done elsewhere. And for that alone, I think that is a rare rare thing that and it really excels at it. it is a very you know like no original like no aspect of it is completely original but there is so many plot threads going at any given time and you're just like how the hell does this tie in together but then it cr gradually eliminates a few and wraps them together and it all just mm -hmm. kind of pulls towards a really solid cohesive conclusion which i just thought was like yeah that was awesome that was really awesome and yeah, so by the end of it, I'm just like, yeah, I'm glad I experienced this. This is very important, and I have since then been pushing that as many people should experience it as possible, which, you know, many of you have. Many of you have followed me up on that, and I'm glad, and I hope more do. Yeah. But if it doesn't, you know, make the cut at the end of the year, that's fine. I get that. But fuck me, it's a special game. It's a really special game. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with what Chris says. It, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's a game that everyone should experience uh, that, you know, that plays games. Uh, it's very unique in that sense. Um, uh, again, like I, I still think the main thing that I just, uh, you know, while the, what it does with its narrative is impressive, I still don't think like by the end of the day, like if you told, if if someone was like, okay, explain the plot of Thirteen Sentinels, you just be like, um, I can't really explain it to you. You can play it and you will get the gist of it, but you will not know. I could not tell you everything. I could summarize it to you very quickly. I could summarize very quickly. Like in a paragraph, I can give you the full thing. I'm not going to because that would no, be like the in, no, like the in-depth plot, like like of all the characters and like all of the different oh, yeah. sectors and things like that. Like you, like but, I, but, no, I absolutely I could disagree. I mean, if Mega Sixty Four <laughs> no. can tell me Evangelion in ten no. minutes, I think he could do it. Ricky, so do you want to say anything? Here? Yeah, from... before it gets deleted, because I know a lot of people here like me like dumb stuff. Um, 
I just want to mention a couple of really cool things that happened in this game. Before this is Ricky's highbrow. As you game say that, game. there was footage that game I showed of the earlier. year for smart people. Yeah. So I'm showing footage of the game, by the way, as we're talking it. And as you people yeah. were talking very highly about the game, there was a guy struggling to find a bush just going left and right on the screen for like three minutes. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. So I think like, I think like, everything Chris said about the story is really cool. Like it's kind of like a reverse onion where you start off with this one idea and then instead of like peeling back layers or like going out further. So you see more and more of what's happening, which is really cool. Uh, but then like some of the moments in this game are pretty ridiculous. I really wish that I'd gotten further in it before we finished nominating stuff because like the, uh, the, you know, you could play it, you could play different characters in different orders, but um, there's a girl named Iori and this isn't going to spoil anything because everyone knows they get in mechs. But uh, when, <laughs> when she like, when you get to a part of her story where she activates her mech, she goes, I may be a, no, she goes, I'm a schoolgirl, but now I'm a schoolgirl with a big ass robot. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know. that's good. Right. Yeah. That's good. She swipes across her that's, some, that's some Yakuza tell. shit right there. I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's another one that I really like, um, which is the best. If, if we had, this should have been a category as the best, um, that's what she said joke of the year because there's there's a part where a girl goes I just wish I had something in my mouth I don't even care what it was or what it is <laughs> but I mean like in that game the game is full of like little moments like that that are hilarious while also like having this huge gigantic story that I absolutely could tell you the plot for if I wanted to um, but I'm not going to because I'm not going to spoil I don't it believe you. you I legitimately I'm sorry I don't believe you well I'm sorry, we'll do wrong. it off of this do it. we'll do it <laughs> Do we it. will drag um, you into the chat and summarize it. Done. Um, yeah, but please do. Cause... I think okay. I, there's just so many little things that Vanillaware gets right. Like I mentioned on Twitter about how every character has their own running animation that is like something so small that doesn't really matter. But when you see like, um, I'm going to use some other names that no one here will know, but like when you see, uh, crap, now I can't remember their name. Hiatoshi, I think, is he's like a, he's like from... Crap, I almost spoiled something. Sorry. He's like a, a military dude, and he like when he's running, he's like very stiff. And then there's a girl who's in on the track team, and when she stops, she like skids because she's so fast. And then there's a guy, one of the guys who's like this, uh, he's like a kind of like a detective or a professor or something. And when he walks or he's instead of running, he like just walks fastly and leans over really far, like he's super serious in thought. And just like all these little details that the game has that I don't think. You know, they're not not something you're gonna pick up on as like something that's gonna make this game a oh, game of the year, is something to me that like made this game stem out of something that you know nails all those small things that all those things together. I paid attention to the details. Yeah, all those I things really together enjoyed. put move this one up my list more and more. But if we cut so, it, I, I get this it. is my question for the two of you because I know you're both very passionate about it, but I also know you are both very passionate about other games that are on the yep. list. So if you were to pit this against those other things that I know are coming down the pipeline that we haven't even spoken a word about, yeah, you're gonna, you both are gonna turn on this, right? Absolutely, yeah. You're asking me to murder my child. <laughs> hey, dude, I just had to kill. I, I, I just it. had I to kill it. Joker a few minutes ago. So. Yeah, I. I fully am fine with it going. It's okay. Off Joker has three stocks, so yeah, it's yeah. true. <laughs> He's got a gun. And there's always out. next year with uh, strikers. So it's true. That is a new game for sure. <laughs> so we, yeah, that'll, yeah. That'll be true. <laughs> we'll have to prepare new arguments against that one. So we're are we killing thirteen sentinels? Yeah, there's there's I think so. should go for it before it, but we can kill it. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to say my piece. I'm glad I said my piece. All of you should play it. Everyone you should play it. Uh, I will I will play it because that single par paragraph from Ian has hooked me. Yeah, Ian thinks you're all uncultured. Actually, three, actually three paragraphs. <laughs> oh my god, three paragraphs. Uh, it was three paragraphs. Yeah, it was three. one really long one. Well, so, damn Ian. So, all right, I have hold to, on. I have to interject. Hold on, let me interject. While we're still talking about it, I'm showing footage. There's this part where a robot's hidden in a waistband, and a guy comes in and is like, is there a pervert in there? Wow. <laughs> 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 uh, no, BJ. <laughs> All right. We're down to the final okay. 10. So we're going to take a quick five-minute break, and then we will come back. And then things are going to get very bad. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you back here in a moment. Now, folks.